Hello everyone! Kumusta po kayo? I hope that you are all doing good. In one of our previous videos, we already talked about the benefits or advantages of being a Philippine dual citizen and how to apply for Philippine dual citizenship. I don't take issue with those who claim that dual citizenship is not good for them and that they would prefer to stay with their current foreign citizenship. We have no quarrel about that. I fully respect that. Indeed, dual citizenship is not for everyone. Each of us has unique circumstances which dictate what is good and what is not good for us, right? From my own research, I was able to make a list of the so-called disadvantages or the downsides of being a dual citizen and I would like to share it with you, of course, with my own views on the matter. We will talk about them after this. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, I hope that you would consider subscribing now simply by clicking that red subscribe button down below and please don't forget to hit that notification bell icon so that you will get notified of our future videos. Maraming salamat po! Why dual citizenship may not be a good idea? For this video, I will discuss 6 potential reasons that have caught my attention. Number one in the list is that dual citizenship may complicate your tax situation. You may find yourself being subjected to tax by two governments and therefore getting taxed twice on the same income. If true, that definitely is not good. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. That is the reason why I suggested in our previous videos that you should obtain a professional tax advice either from a lawyer or from a tax expert in the country of your current citizenship before you decide to retain or to reacquire your Philippine citizenship. In so far as the Philippine tax laws are concerned, if you are a Filipino dual citizen but you permanently reside abroad, you are taxable only on your income from sources within the Philippines, such that if you do not earn income from the Philippines, that will not be a problem in so far as the Philippine income tax is concerned. But if you are a Filipino dual citizen who permanently resides in the Philippines, you are taxable on your income from sources within or outside the Philippines. You will need to file an income tax return in the Philippines and you will have to declare even your income earned abroad. It is in this regard that you would need the help of an accountant on how you can benefit from the tax treaty that the Philippines has with the other country of your current citizenship. As to whether your income in the Philippines is taxable by the other country or not, that is what you need to find out also. And it will be to your advantage if the Philippines has a tax treaty or tax agreement with that country that deals with double taxation. Examples of countries that have tax treaty with the Philippines are the United States, Canada, Australia, Germany, France, Italy, Norway, Denmark, Sweden, Spain, UAE, and United Kingdom. Please consult your lawyer or accountant on how you can benefit from this tax treaty. I discuss this topic in this video. I hope you will find time to watch it later. Please note that you are not automatically exempt from tax when there is a tax treaty. There are rules and regulations that you need to follow in order for you to avail of the privileges under the double tax agreements. The United States, for instance, assesses taxes on its citizens for global income. Fortunately, the United States has an income tax treaty with the Philippines. But again, you need to consult your lawyer or your accountant on how this tax treaty works for you. Number two in the list is that as dual citizen, you may be subject to the laws of both countries. Problem may arise when the laws of these two countries are conflicting or are not in harmony with each other. One primary reason why countries like Japan do not allow dual citizenship is that it results to divided loyalty. A dual citizen may find himself or herself in a serious dilemma as to which law to follow 
when he or she is confronted with conflicting laws of two countries. This is where the rules of conflicts of law would apply. Conflicts of law is a body of rules that guide the court as to what law to apply when a case involves a foreign element, whether or not the court should apply the foreign law or laws. For example, Philippine laws relating to family rights and duties or to the status, condition, and legal capacity of persons are binding upon citizens of the Philippines even though they are living abroad. That is why if both the husband and the wife are Filipino citizens or Philippine dual citizens, at the time of the divorce, the divorce decree that they obtained abroad cannot be recognized and enforced in the Philippines because their national law governs their legal capacity even if they are abroad. Since such foreign divorce cannot be recognized in the Philippines, neither of them can validly contract another marriage in the Philippines. We already discussed this matter on foreign divorce in three previous videos. I hope that you will watch them. Also, under the Civil Code of the Philippines, intestate and testamentary successions, both with respect to the order of succession and to the amount of successional rights, and to the intrinsic validity of testamentary provisions shall be regulated by the national law of the person whose succession is under consideration, whatever may be the nature of the property and regardless of the country wherein said property may be found. I am talking here of how the inheritance will be distributed to the heirs of a Filipino dual citizen. Since a Filipino dual citizen is a Filipino citizen, the Philippine law is also his national law and can be considered in the determination of successional or inheritance rights. As he or she is also a citizen of the other country, there might be a need to look into the rules on the conflict of laws that the other country has. It is where some of the legal disputes arise, and it is where a very good estate planning becomes more important if you are a Philippine dual citizen with assets and liabilities spread in two or more different countries. Number three in the list is the possibility of losing one's social security benefits. If you are receiving social security benefits from your current country of citizenship and residence, are you going to lose it if you acquire Philippine dual citizenship? As I will be discussing here, Concerns about losing one's social security benefits is more of a residency issue and not dual citizenship issue. From my readings, for those in the U.S., being a dual citizen does not affect their social security benefits. It is when you live outside the U.S. when you are required to notify the government and make the necessary arrangements on how you can receive your benefits. Others suggest that you don't have to notify the SSA if you are simply traveling to the Philippines for a short visit with an intention to return to the U.S. thereafter. There are those who suggest also that you can continue to receive your social security benefits through your U.S. bank account and just transfer the fund to your Philippine bank account. There are countries where social security payments are completely or partially restricted but fortunately, Philippines is not one of them. I suggest that you visit the website of the Social Security Administration for additional information. Similarly, for Filipino-Canadian dual citizens, they can continue enjoying their pension from the Canada Pension Plan or CPP even if they decide to retire and live permanently in the Philippines. In one online blog, it was explained that in the case of Old Age Security or OAS, However, to continue receiving the OAS pension while living outside of Canada, the OAS pensioner must have lived in Canada for at least 20 years after their 18th birthday. But if they do not meet the 20-year residency rule and they came from a country without a social security agreement with Canada, they need to return to Canada every six months in order to continue receiving the OAS benefit. That is why some retired Filipino Canadians stay for six months in Canada and spend the next six months in the Philippines. According to the Canadian government website, you can set up a Philippine local bank account and enroll the same with 
the Service Canada if you prefer that your benefits be directly deposited to a Philippine local bank account. One good thing which is not known to many is that Philippines and Canada has a social security agreement which covers equality of treatment, export of benefits, totalization of insurance periods, and mutual administrative assistance. This lengthy topic deserves a separate video. The travel.state.gov, a website managed by the U.S. State Department, has a list of challenges for having dual citizenship and I would like to highlight three of them which for me are relevant to Philippine dual citizens. First is limited U.S. assistance abroad. According to the said website, local authorities may not recognize your U.S. nationality if you are also a national of that country, especially if you did not enter the country using your U.S. passport. The U.S. Embassy or Consulate's ability to provide consular assistance may be limited. In the case of the Philippines, however, if you are a Filipino-American dual citizen, you may enter the Philippines and be admitted as a Filipino citizen even if you use your U.S. passport. According to the official website of the Philippine Consulate General in New York, as a dual citizen, it is not mandatory to apply for a Philippine passport. You may use your U.S. passport when traveling to the Philippines. You simply have to present your dual documents to the Philippine Immigration Officer as proof of Philippine citizenship per the Bureau of Immigration's Operation Order Number SBM-2014-045 dated 30 September 2014, which is in force and still in effect. Incoming Filipinos may present a valid Philippine passport, identification certificate or certificate of reacquisition or retention of Philippine citizenship to be admitted as a Filipino citizens. The way I understand it is that when you enter the Philippines as a Philippine citizen, you will be treated as such. If you find yourself in trouble in the Philippines and you seek assistance from the U.S. Embassy or Consulate as its citizen, you may have a problem because the Philippine government may assert its jurisdiction over you as its own citizen, especially that you are in the Philippine soil. What possible scenario in the Philippines can you think of wherein you would need the assistance of the U.S. government or your current country of citizenship and residence? Please feel free to share it with us in the comment section below. Also, the website says notification and access to detained dual nationals. Many countries do not recognize dual nationality under their laws, even if they do not expressly prohibit dual nationality. U.S. consular officials may not be permitted to access U.S. nationals in detention if they are also nationals of the country where they are detained. Dual nationals who are arrested or detained should request that police or prison officials notify the closest U.S. Embassy or consulate. In the case of the Philippines, RA 925 allows dual citizenship when it allows former natural-born Filipino citizens to retain or to reacquire their Philippine citizenship without renouncing the other citizenship. I am not certain though how this could affect a criminal case that involves a Filipino-American dual citizen. Perhaps the fact that the U.S. Embassy or Consulate is monitoring the case will help ensure that the dual citizen receives fair treatment in all stages of the proceedings, but not necessarily acquittal because it primarily depends on the strength of the prosecution's evidence. As a lawyer, I have faith in the Philippine criminal justice system. You may freely agree or disagree with that statement, but for me, our criminal justice system may not be perfect, but things are being done to improve it. Well, it is really up to you if it provides a sufficient reason for you not to have Philippine dual citizenship, but you might need to ask yourself first, how high is the risk that you will get arrested or detained in the Philippines? And the third one, military service. Dual nationals may be subject to mandatory military service in a foreign country. This obligation may be imposed immediately upon arrival or when attempting to depart the country. In the United States, the U.S. government official website says that the U.S. military has been all-volunteer since 1973 
but an act of Congress could still reinstate the draft in case of national emergency. Almost all men ages 18 to 25 who are U.S. citizens or are immigrants living in the U.S. are required to register with the Selective Service, which gets activated only when there is a situation requiring a draft. In Canada, military service is also voluntary. In the Philippines, we do not have mandatory military service, but it is currently being proposed by the Vice President of the Philippines, but we still need a legislation for that to happen. If you have other reason or reasons why dual citizenship may not be a good idea, please feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. Let me know also if any of these reasons outweigh the benefits or advantages of being a Philippine dual citizen. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it yet and hit that notification bell icon so that you will get notified of our future videos. Always remember ignorance of the law excuses no one from compliance therewith. I will see you in my next video. Ingat po kayo.